Well, hello and welcome. It's Revelation's birthday and we're delighted to be celebrating with you for the next hour. We're live and I'm rather in a full studio tonight and uh, <laughs> let me just introduce to you some of the people who are around about. Um, Leslie over there Thank sitting you. in the blues. Thank you, I'm here. Yep, and, and next to her is her beloved husband on Valentine's Day. Oh. Very pleased to be with her. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gordon. And Leslie, happy anniversary. Thank you. Oh, but this is not just the anniversary of the television channel. No? It's no. Because it's the first time. No. Oh. Giving you oh. a, a, you know, a Valentine's, Valentine's kiss. I know. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> now that's you it for another 20, 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> now you need to give Grady one. <laughs> Oh dear, sorry Grady. How about a hearty handshake? Oh, there you go. <coughs> yeah. 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 We, we should explain to you that this morning on the our morning's programme, Howard had a marvellous verse, two Corinthians, uh, not two Corinthians, it was <laughs> Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes. Uh, 4 and, and verse 9, and uh, it begins by saying, two are better than one. And we said, Howard, you've chosen that one because it's Valentine's Day. Is it, he said? <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Ah. Uh, Grady, lovely to have you with us. And, Thank you, sir. Uh, you're going to be with us for quite a little while, I believe. For two weeks. Two weeks? Yes. It'll be good. And then, am I supposed to lean across and I'll blow you kisses? That's it. <laughs> My beloved wife, Lorna, beside us here. And we just want to celebrate and uh, share in the wonderful day that the Lord has given us, which is 20 years of Revelation TV. So we do have a verse for you tonight, and it is from 2 Corinthians and chapter 9 and verse 15, and it's a very simple one-liner. It says, the thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. There you are at the top of the page, a black page there. And it's actually talking when it says about an indescribable gift about the Lord Jesus. But we would just want to say in terms of Revelation TV, because on this day in the 14th of February 2003, screen went black and then suddenly, da -da 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 -da, and Howard, there you were. It was very scary, I've got to tell you. I'm, I know I had to go live because the Lord said, you've got to go live. I mean, it's bad enough trying to pre-record something. It was scary for me too. Oh, I know, you were watching. What was the story behind that? <laughs> no, I've gone, you can carry on. No, well, <laughs> how can I after that? Now, now you tell what, was, what you were doing. You were at home, you know, I suppose. I was at home <laughs> and uh, we were fostering. And I was fostering a little baby who very sadly had been starved by its parents. And therefore, the health visitor had to come to my house every week to weigh the baby. And she had phoned me and said that on this particular day, because she used to change the times, and she was coming at like 12.30 on the 14th of February. And when I answered the door to her, I said, Annie, come in. Um, I knew her very well by then. I said, come in. I said, but first, you've got to watch the TV with me. I said, because, I said, this could be <laughs> the beginning <laughs> or the end for us. <laughs> I said, this has got to work. And um, I said, let's just watch uh, the first 10 minutes. And we actually watched <laughs> the whole program um, with the little baby on my knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he must be 20. Scared? He's 20 years old now, that baby. You, you believe Can't it? <laughs> no, no, no. Mm -mm, mm. God bless him. Yeah, he wow. did survive. He survived. He went. He did yeah. well. He did well. Yeah. Scary, scary day. Yeah. Mm. They were, and and you were in the centre of London. We have some photos, don't we, of you? Just yes. The, uh, well, the the, the, the one that was taken uh, actually twenty years ago, just uh, the day we were launching, was there, right next to the BT Tower. I haven't changed much, have I? <laughs> <laughs> that was. Uh, should I say that again? I haven't changed much. <laughs> oh, no, there you there. go. Yes, there you now, go. Hey. That was last week. You see, so a little bit of difference in the tower. Have you noticed? No, <laughs> well, tower. let me just look at. <laughs> yeah. See, the tower in 2003 had yeah. some, um, if you like, satellite dishes. Mm. Can you see uh, in yeah. the middle to top? Yes. Uh -huh. that they, they've disappeared because they don't need satellite dishes anymore. It's all done. But of course, the when you pipe. launched. It, the nearer a TV station was to the BT Tower. The cheaper it was. The, the, the better it was, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah. And that's why you got it in a place called Cleveland Street, which was right where the BT Tower was. Yes, and um, the name of the company that was broadcasting us out was... On Air. Thank you. On Air. They helped us incredibly, both at that particular time, but also about six weeks later, when I'd run out, we'd run out of money, and um, the MD of that particular organization 
said, Howard, we've had a meeting. Um, we've all agreed. And I went, yes, yes, yes. And we're going to keep you on for six months. And I thought, oh, no, I thought it was all over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thought we've we've we, done we, our best. You've answered the call of yeah, God and it's failed. And it was all over, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Um, but they, and we managed to um, broadcast for the next six months and at the same time pay off our any debts that we had. It was amazing. I do thank Petra and Matt. And I can't remember the MD's name. He used to be head of um, Avid. Uh, but they were lovely. And do you know what happened next? You haven't heard this before. No, okay, so what happened next was... I said, look, I'll tell you what, what we're going to do, we're going to open the post together, the MD and I, and so every penny that comes in, you m I want you to know as we open the envelopes that you get paid uh, a particular proportion. I can't remember what it's it was. about 90%. Or yeah, I know, but I wanted it? to yes. make sure we paid our debts because mm -hmm. it's a Christian thing to do and, um, and it's an honourable thing to do anyway, even if you're not a Christian because other people are left them owing lots of money. So I wanted to make sure we set a good standard. Mm. And uh, and what happened was, as we were opening the envelopes, the money started to come in because people were starting to support us. And it was amazing. And the MD actually said to me, Howard, somebody up there likes you because the first envelope we opened was a check for 5,000. That th wasn't norm the norm, though, oh, was no. it, by <laughs> any means? No, I know. But please don't misunderstand yeah. me. But that was the truth. Mm. And then there was so many for like 1,000, then there was 500, 10 pounds, and whatever. But <coughs> he was impressed with the fact the response yeah. was so yes. good. But it was yeah. good that we opened the, the envelopes in front of him. I wanted to see that everything was above board. Right. Leslie, you opened an envelope today. It didn't have money in it, but it had a card uh, in it, it didn't did it? It did indeed. It had have a you, card. Have you got it? I have. I've actually just put it down here, huh. and it says, <laughs> Revelation TV. I'm going to tell you what Lorna said in a minute. And it says, Happy 20th birthday. And it's from oh, Sue. Oh, you got it. Yeah, then. there you go. Oh, Sue oh, and God. Jimmy, yeah. who are the parents of um, Nikki, Nick. who um, presents programmes for us. And when I showed the card to Lorna, she said, oh, she said, do you think they made it? I said, no, they bought it in Tesco's. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you could get them any time. You know? It's really lovely, oh. though. But you yeah. never know. It says, going from strength to strength to this present day, God's blessings come from you in all you do and say. The word uplifts your viewers in scripture that we hear. Through Jesus' name we come, drawing those far and near. I pray for God's favour to never ever leave you for all my Rev TV family. May your precious dreams come true. Love and blessings always, your devoted viewers, Sue and Jimmy. I thought that was absolutely oh, that was lovely. 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 Just a reminder of you, Sue and Jimmy are the parents of Nikki. Yep. That's presents right. the program. Mm. That's right. And and we, we we had this morning just so many e emails coming in and texts coming in, didn't we? Yeah, let uh, me um, read a few emails yeah. out and then we're going to say hi again to uh, Dr. Grady. And um, it says here, Happy Birthday, Revelation TV. All praise and thanks to Jesus for creating this living channel and using Howard as a great vessel to spread the word of God throughout the world. Well done, Howard and Leslie and the whole of the Revelation team. From Dylan. Thanks so much, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Pleasure and you. I've got another one here. Evening all. Good evening. Just want to wish Revelation TV all the best with the 20th anniversary and Master Howard and all the team for the next 20 years doing a cracking job. Guys, um, we watch religiously. God bless you all. Faye Futa in the Scottish Borders, Howick. Oh, yeah. oh, that's absolutely lovely. lovely. Bless yes. Yeah. Oh, bless you. Thank yeah. you. And uh, keep nice. emails and texts coming in, and we look forward to, to reading and, and sharing them. But, but one of the things that uh, yeah. uh, you've talked about is the fact that uh, it was in Cleveland Street where we started, and uh, your brother in law, uh, Jeremy, has, has done a piece, hasn't he, where he talks about Cleveland Street and, and the place where Revelation TV started. I think we're going to watch a little bit of it. Okay. Jeremy. Bless you. Here we are in Cleveland Street, in the city of London, in the shadow of the imposing British Telecoms Tower. Samuel Morse, the inventor of the Morse code, once lived here, as did Charles Dickens. But it was here that Revelation TV had its beginnings. Back in 2002, the only way to get programmes aired was to either deliver the tapes to this playout facility, or if you wanted to go live, have a studio within. Which is exactly what Howard did. 
with the limited resources that were available to him, he rented a single room from which he was to go live on the Sky Network. I remember visiting Howard here when there were about eight people squeezed into a tiny room along with tape players, music equipment, set furniture and of course the compulsory kettle for making tea in the corner. It was from here that Howard sat nervously in front of a camera as the countdown to go live sounded. On February the 14th, 2003, Revelation TV officially began broadcasting. For almost a year, the small team of mostly volunteers squeezed themselves into this sweat box of an office with no air conditioning and managed to put together a daily schedule of live and pre-recorded shows, overcoming issues like exploding lights and set furniture falling apart whilst live on air. Looking back, it was hard to believe that it was going to work, but somehow it did. It was from here that programmes like Bible study began and of course Howard's very popular World in Focus. Some of Revelation TV's most memorable interviews took place here. I recall watching Bill Wilson for the first time when, he, when Howard interviewed him as he gave his testimony and shared with us the incredible work he was doing with deprived children in New York. As support for the fledgling channel increased and space became available, Howard was able to move into the large industrial units on the first floor where he was better able to realise his vision for a national Christian TV channel. There was enough room to have Christian bands and music shows, proper sets which didn't fall over, and they were finally able to afford proper broadcast cameras with a dedicated music studio and a full-time sound engineer. At this time, Howard was still travelling from his home in Surbiton to work here, and due to the nature of the work and the lack of resources, he would often find himself working into the early hours. Mark the cabbie would often pick him up and race through the London traffic to try and get Howard to the station in time for his last train home. Not always successfully. Eventually Howard were to move his whole family up to London, close enough to walk to the studio and also spend time with his family. Over the next few years, Revelation TV was to firmly establish itself as a credible TV channel, broadcasting programmes that for many were the long-awaited answer to prayer. Programmes that met people at their level, that brought hope and confidence that Christianity was still alive and that the gospel of Jesus was unashamedly being broadcast across the airwaves. Unlike any other Christian channel, Howard was determined to make Revelation TV interactive. The phone lines were opened live on air to receive viewers' comments. Every live show would allow emails and texts, giving people a platform to air their opinions and share their testimonies. It was from here, of course, that he took cameras out on the streets to film the events immediately after the 7-7 suicide bombings that brought London to a standstill, for which he was to receive a Christian Broadcasting Council Gold Award. After four years, Howard felt the prompting of God to leave London and get out of debt. The cost of operating from London was very high and technology had moved on sufficiently enough that they didn't need to be so close to the playout facility to have the ability to do live TV. The advent of fibre optics meant that Howard could move the studio set up completely out of London and into a less expensive area. Yeah, now that's how it was, because Jeremy did that a few years ago, and of course Cleveland Street has changed somewhat. I'm going to show you the photographs uh, that uh, follow here. Now this is the cafe, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hmm. Gordon and Lorna as well, and Leslie, <laughs> yeah. that we used to go to every now and again and eat. This is the Brazilian cafe here, as you can see, and also some of the other buildings that where we were broadcasting from have all changed. Look at that. Yeah. Blocks of flats, amazing. You know, so um, if you want to imagine that was uh, yeah, yeah. where our studio was just on the on the first floor up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now those flats sell for millions. Mm. We should have stayed there, shouldn't Time we? Time has yeah. moved on. <laughs> but we didn't Time learn it, Howard. Time has moved yeah. on. <laughs> Absolutely. But yes, I mean, it's all changed. London has changed. And it's, uh, but, you know, if we go back to the time in 2003, again, you'll see the photo that there with the tower as well. And uh, that's the time that we launched two, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Uh, look a bit younger there. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then the, this last week, I think this is where we have uh, the new look <laughs> of the tower. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then when we, when we moved from Cleveland Street, central London, after the bombings and such yeah. things, and uh, we had nowhere for a home for our studio, so we had this bright idea of turning our house into a studio, stroke offices, stroke edits room, as well as Howard and I and the children living in that house. And in fact, Grady, that's where we met you. It was, and um, I even made several trips doing work there in the house before you moved into Malden. 
And uh, I remember the very first time I was all the way up the stairs to the top. I almost didn't fit through the door <laughs> <laughs> to get into that little studio set up on the top floor. That's right, right at the top. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was going to need oxygen if it was another. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that Howard and Leslie didn't wonder when they went in their bedroom whether they could fit through the door. Actually, I, I, yeah. I slept there on one trip. I opened the in, in, in the house, <laughs> but they were not there at the time. Uh. And <laughs> well, we turned our uh, bedroom into the control room. Yeah. Well, that's what we used to do. Uh, so yeah, but then you went to then the we very had, so top. We had to go to the top. That's right. Yeah. Oh my and, and the only way that you could get in and out of bed, if I remember right, well, not that I ever saw it, but, but was <laughs> to crawl over the bed. <laughs> yeah, because the, the bed just squeezed in the room, it, the, and I couldn't get out the wrong side of bed. That was the, that was the whole idea. And you and you stayed there, did you? In in the room One time. with the bed. Yeah. yeah. You have to go feet first. The room was six foot square and so was the bed. <laughs> we yeah. literally and at that time I was six, two and a half, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and your neighbours clearly wondered what was happening because at least one person complained to the council because the council came to investigate just to see if we were all legal and kosher. Yes. And it was one of our enemies, were. actually. <laughs> but, yeah. but also, I can remember that one of our girls, Katrina, who um, we had, the, our front room was an office. Everyone's busy on their computers. And someone knocked on the door. Katrina answered, he said, oh, is this a place where, where I can buy a computer? And she said, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> so I thought you were a computer shop that's opened up because <laughs> they could see everybody the there. Oh, oh dear. But anyway, but um, Jeremy continues the story that once we left London, we moved the whole establishment into our home. Years before the start of Revelation TV, Howard and Leslie had moved into a large, rambling house where they could provide rooms for children who needed fostering. Throughout much of the early years of Revelation, Leslie had continued to do this, but by now their fostering days were drawing to an end. Howard saw an opportunity to utilise his own home as a replacement studio. It would mean a huge move from London, but would save so much money that was being spent on rent, money which could be directed into making better programmes which was, and still is, at the heart of what Howard has always wanted to do. But moving a TV studio into a regular house was a big task, one that would come with many hurdles to overcome, not least the question of how a family would share their home with a functioning business. Nevertheless, this is what was agreed, and the plan went ahead. And so, the front room here was to become the control room and office space, Next door, the playroom, the foster children's playroom here, was to become the play-out room where the signal goes out to the rest of the world. And then down here, the kitchen. Now, the kitchen, well, of course, the kitchen had to double up because actually it was still a family home and a functioning kitchen, but had to be used as a daytime set for shows like Our Mornings uh, and She Matters. Uh, so it wasn't uncommon, actually, to see Howard shuffle across the floor in his dressing gown, come over here and uh, make a cup of tea live on air. Cup of tea, anyone? Upstairs, the lounge became the main studio with a purpose-built desk and background. So many programmes went out from this room. Programmes like Live at Nine, Bible Study and Testimony Time, to name just a few. All inspiring and informative, yet still achieved with a relatively low budget, which of course came from the relatively few precious viewers who saw the vision and were moved to support it. Here, next door, in what is now a kit room, was originally Leslie and Howard's bedroom, but it, this was to become the control room. And I remember sitting here with Jane when we first began, thank God for Fridays. Dan was sat at the control desk right next to us. I also remember a very tired Mark the Cabbie sitting here doing voice in the wilderness into the early hours of the morning, Howard occasionally joining him. Of course, all this meant that the family had to share their house with whoever was working for the channel, whether that was the guests coming in or the office staff working downstairs. I think you can imagine the challenges for a family who have to share their house with an almost around the clock TV channel. I think we can all agree it can't have been easy. Respect to Leslie Howard and the children. But there are reasons why homes are homes and are generally not used as TV studios. Proper studios require space and height, parking for staff and guests, industrial facilities that can cope with the wear and tear of so much regular use. 
prayerfully, the management team sought God as to what to do and where they may find larger premises to move to. What was to happen next was incredible and answered their prayers in a way that surpassed even their expectations of what God would do. And so well done, Jeremy. we moved um, the whole team out of our house. Do you know at times we, well, I would count 25 people <laughs> in our house? <laughs> it was. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to cook dinner for the children and there's people coming and there's people switching. Barry and Batty are turning up yeah. to do the Shabbat, Shabbat meal. <laughs> Me trying to get the kitchen cleared before they would sit down to do the meal. I mean, and it was relentless. It went on and on and on. But not only did it start early in the morning, but we used to have Voice in the Wilderness and that didn't start till midnight <laughs> at night. And in those days, it went on till two or three in the morning. And uh, I just kept thinking, you know, give us the grace, God, to keep going with this because it was and, so And whenever hard. a person came, they always thought they were just for once, just to have a minute or two of talking with you. <laughs> yes, and, absolutely. Yeah. I'd be ironing in the kitchen <laughs> and people would be turning up and such things. But, I mean, quite uh, in quite a miraculous way, we had the opportunity to move to proper studios near our home. And those studios are what we called the New Malden Studios. New Malden, just a stone's throw from Howard and Leslie's home stroke studio in Surbiton. In 2009, Barrett Homes built this high spec building complex that we can see behind me. But for years before that, there was a TV studio here. Originally, it was called the Brick Box and was home to Fountain TV, where shows like Ready Steady Cook were filmed. After changing hands several times, the studio was released by a music company who ran a TV channel on the Sky Digital Service. They refitted and improved much of the outdated infrastructure. Howard had kindly been offered space within the offices where they could store outside broadcast equipment and also have access to the large, fully equipped studio. However, God had other ideas. Within hours of Howard being scheduled to sign a contract on the standard industrial office just down the road, news came that the whole New Malden complex was available to rent. The music company had sadly gone out of business, leaving the way free for Revelation TV to take over the property. In April of 2008, Revelation TV moved into the premises and renamed it Genesis House. I remember walking into the studio for the very first time. I think it was at that point that I really glimpsed God's vision for Revelation TV. I had just come from a front room in a suburban house where everything, cameras, sets, lights and people had been squeezed into every available space possible, into, well, a proper TV studio. I think I probably had that smirk on my face that says, all right, Lord, maybe this is of you. It wasn't long after that that I left the business I was running and joined Revelation TV in their graphics department. I felt like I was leaving behind a world of nothingness and coming to a place where what I did had everlasting effects, even possibly into eternity. Those were good days, those New Malden days. Yes, we were still operating out of the home studio in Surbiton, but we slowly started to utilise this great space here in New Malden. We could have bands again, famous faces like Helen Shapiro, Charlie Lansborough, and of course, who can forget Daniel O'Donnell. We held through the night election specials and began shows like Building the Foundation, where we were able to show you a little bit of what was going on behind the scenes. Our number of volunteers grew, as did the amount of presenters. And we produced a multitude of different shows, always learning, honing our skills, yes, making some mistakes, but always with the desire to create inspiring and watchable Christian TV. During this time, we felt it necessary to come out of the umbrella of Ofcom, which, due to the deterioration of Christian ethics in Britain, were becoming progressively more opposed to the biblical message that we preached. In 2008, we moved our head office to Spain and submitted ourselves under the Spanish licensing authority. Inevitably, things change. And in 2009, we were given notice by Barrett Holmes to vacate the building. By now, we already had a functioning studio in Spain, and so we packed up our things and headed for the continent. One thing we have found as a channel is that we must always be ready for change, but safe in the knowledge that our God doesn't, that he is always reliable and trustworthy, faithful and true, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Yes, 
we may find ourselves in a tight spot every now and again, but whenever we look back, it's clear to see God's hand as he draws us onwards with him, taking us by the hand and directing our steps. Brilliant. It's amazing to listen to a story like that where the whole 20 years is condensed down into about five or six minutes uh, because so much was going on during that time. And one of the things, uh, the decision to go to Spain was the fact that we, we used to meet every new year, didn't we? And, and just begin to plan and to pray. And before Barrett Holmes gave us notice, we decided to give them notice that we were going to move. I clearly got the heads up from the Lord that we were, our tenure there uh, was going to be brought to an end. And we'd been there like five years, had we not? And yeah. so and I, I knew it was going to take us longer than three months is that the notice they would have given us. Um, so I s said three months before that. So we had six months to make um, the preparation for moving all the kit, de-rigging and setting up in Spain. And did good job the Lord <coughs> did give us that heads up because we, otherwise we'd have been out on a limb. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And, and during that time, Grady, you with a, a small team from Revelation went to Israel, didn't you, to, to film a whole series of things. And we saw in the footage there just a little bit of the post-production being done. We actually filmed several of the full-length presentations at New Malden, but we also did full-length presentations in Israel. And the Waters Cleave in particular, we started up at Caesarea Philippi and we did other shots as well. Uh, and then at King of Kings in Jerusalem, uh, we used their auditorium, they were very gracious about that, and filmed some more presentations there. It's quite a fact, trip. Um, just before the pandemic, we were actually due to do an Israel tour and, we, and it was called, you know, Israel with, with Dr. Grady. Do you remember? The, and we had to cancel it, <laughs> we didn't we, because it. of COVID? Yeah. Still like to do that. Maybe we should talk about that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a very good idea. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's been amazing today to, to just look back and to see so many of the people who've been part of Revelation over the years. And I think we've got a little piece, Howard, of you and Mark and uh, one of the voices in the wilderness. I don't know whether it's one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's why you're allowed to be in your pyjamas the next morning coming okay. down for <laughs> toast. Uh, here is uh, Mark the Cabby, as we used to affectionately know him then, and Howard on a very late night programme just get together this is mark willett and this is how Wakanda. how you doing guys and this is voice in the wilderness in focus world <laughs> <laughs> is that right it's a bit of everything isn't it it is our, isn't it our evenings our evenings <laughs> or we could go into morning <laughs> normally does doesn't it eh? <laughs> this is live just just to prove it how can it we is. prove that it's live do we have a date yep 25th of march fantastic it's the best offer i've had all week I've never had a date for ages. <laughs> Nor have I, actually. <laughs> Is it? We haven't gone in for a world in focus tonight. Because no. Mark came early. Yeah. Business is so bad in London, isn't it, for the cabbies <laughs> at the moment? Easter is always particularly bad. <laughs> yep, it is. It but, is. But the economy's got a, a few things to play with that, hasn't it? I was saying to Leslie downstairs, Howard, it's... Um, Thing, place things are downstairs. things are happening out there. They yeah. definitely are. With, in what way? With these, you know, the credit crunch. It's you know the American economy and all the American banks crisis. It's starting to filter through. You know, a lot of my business is with the investment bankers, and um, well, I think Bear Stearns, which was one of our old accounts, uh, got bought out this week. It almost went bankrupt. Uh, another couple of big names are on the verge, and uh, the first thing they do is pull in their belts with taxis which is quite weird because they give a lot of bankers million pound bonuses. <laughs> well, that's funny because Gordon Brown does a lot to do with taxes. He does. Yeah, he pulls the belt in a bit. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? he I think does. he spells it slightly different. He does, he yeah, does. He's going to get his come up in this one day. When there's nobody who's got any money anymore, where's he going to get it from? Well, we were just having a little discussion while that was on. We don't think it was 2003. Uh, we think it was, or you think it was 2005. Well, about 2007, seven, eight, because the credit that crunch. Um, and the thing is, that was also in our home. So we'd moved out to Cleveland Street and we'd set that. That control room was in our bedroom at 45. Yeah. That's yeah. often when we moved up into the little box room because yeah. we couldn't uh, actually sleep in there any longer. Um, we what do you mean we can't sleep any longer? Any, any, <laughs> even these days. <laughs> 
we did What's ask the program this morning. You'd understand. <laughs> we did ask um, some of our presenters and friends of Revelation TV, past and present, to send some birthday greetings, and uh, we've got um, a couple now to share with you. And that starts with Birgit, who used to be a very big part of Revelation TV for many, many years before she went back to New Zealand. And also, let me just say that she was the weather lady at one stage. She was our weather lady, yes, yes, yes. yes. That's, that's because somebody this morning wrote in and said, I can remember someone who used to do the weather. We were playing a, a piece about uh, Yemi attempting to do it very inadequately. And we thought it was Birgit, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Well, here we go. Birgit, thank you. Hi, Howard and Leslie and all of the Revelation TV family. A very happy 20th birthday to Revelation TV. Wow, I can't believe that it's been 20 years. And when I think of that, I cast my mind back to the very, very early days when we were all at Cleveland Street. And I remember being out in the back office with Leslie and some um, others of the team. And we would receive calls from viewers and they would be requesting those early videos and those early interviews with Barry Smith and with Ian McCormick. And those were the days of VHS videos. That's how far we're going back. And then we'd take those videos and put them in those envelopes and send them out um, and I remember our mornings with Leslie and World in Focus with Howard and all the adventures we had. And then moving from Cleveland Street to Surbiton, New Malden, um, back to Surbiton, <laughs> Spain. Um, it's been amazing, 20 years, wow. And it is such a testimony to God's amazing faithfulness and his goodness, it's just, so wonderful and I just really want to um, acknowledge you Howard and Leslie for your obedience to the vision that God gave you and your hard work and commitment um, over all of these years and all of the hard work of the team as well. Um, it truly is service to the Kingdom of God and Revelation TV has ministered to so many around the world over all this time. God is amazing. And not only has Revelation TV survived, but it's thrived and gone from strength to strength. And long may that continue by God's amazing grace. So on this very special occasion, I am celebrating with you all, all the way over here in New Zealand. And I love you all, I miss you all, and I look forward to seeing you all, Lord willing, in the time ahead. Um, and in the meantime, I thought it would be really lovely just to end off with the priestly blessing from the Book of Numbers. So a blessing for Revelation TV's 20th birthday. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Happy 20th birthday, Revelation TV. Lots of love. Bye. Revelation TV, I am so grateful to God that you have pioneered the way and made the dream of Christian TV come true. A vision without a plan is just a daydream, but you've put in those hard yards and by the grace of God have made it happen and kept it going. What a privilege it is to be part of your program, The Persecuted Church, and to bring monthly short reflections that point to Jesus. I love getting to know you. There is a humility about you and a willingness to be a servant to the Lord and his people. Jesus is the servant king and you are the servant TV channel. You are kingdom minded and generous, and there's a humility about you that is a world away from what we normally find in the media. Keep speaking the truth in love. Keep pioneering, keep encouraging, keep building up the body and keep drawing more to Jesus. Happy 20th birthday, Revelation TV, and here's to the next 20 years. Oh, I don't know about 20 years. <laughs> I got We got so many emails into the morning show 
I didn't have a, a chance to read even half of them out. So uh, let me send some greetings um, that way from you, our lovely viewers. And I've got one here from Saskia, Saskia who says, watching you from Torremolinos. Oh. Wonderful, <laughs> just down the road. <laughs> I've got one here from Nimi who says, happy 20th oh, birthday Nimi. to my lovely Revelation Channel family. You're such a blessing. May you continue to prosper and go from strength to strength in Jesus' name. It's not the, the, no, no. It's not the, the, Nimi. the, the Nimi that we, that we Nimi. know personally, but another Nimi. Um, another one here. Hello, everyone, and the back team as well. It's really great to know such an impact your channel has made for me. Wonderful programs you put out with all aspects of God-given topics, everyday life issues. It's, it was great to see Barry and <laughs> <Yeah>. Batia. <laughs> it's great to see Dr. Grady with you all too. I've watched Barry and Batia on YouTube. Their music really moves me. It's quite emotional as they bring the city of Jerusalem with them. Bless you all, Revelation TV viewers. And then Mary says, I'd like to say, she says, what a happy bunch you are. She says, I'd like to say a very happy birthday to Revelation TV. It's a glorious one indeed, wishing you another 20 years plus, plus, plus. Aww. Aww. <laughs> and then Annie says, happy 20th birthday, Revelation TV. May the Lord continue to bless you all. And uh, hello to Eileen. Blessings to you all at our lovely Revelation TV. I've been watching you since you started from day one. What a great journey we've had um, and with our family and the Lord's words. Congratulations and all our prayers and love to you all. Thank you for your prayers um, sent up, that are sent up for us. And that's from Eileen and Richard in Suffolk. Um, just one more and then I'll put it down for a little while. Hi everyone, just want to say happy birthday to you all. I only started watching you about five years ago, but the timing was great as you really helped me and my family mm. during the coronavirus. You helped us mm. live in peace when the whole world was going astray. And I am Yemi's biggest fan, <laughs> and that's D in Liverpool. <laughs> Thank you so crazy. much. Like the world was going <laughs> crazy. Yeah. yeah. Time. Mm. During the COVID, just bought the, don't we know? You it? haven't Mike, even got your Mike. mic. Where's Mike. your mic? Oh, hello, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, we put in extra time. Oh, did we? COVID. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we Lots felt, of hours. We never stopped. Yeah, mm -hmm. We felt the viewers needed that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Grady, um, when we were sitting earlier, I said to you, I said, Grady, I said, do you not get tired of? Um, the Q&A show every other Monday when you're on for an hour ask, answering question after question. And what did you say? <laughs> I never get tired of it. I love Q&A. You do, don't you? I really do. How long have you been doing Q&A? <laughs> well, I don't know. How long have we been doing q <laughs> <laughs> It was always you and Howard, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, probably 15, good 15 years. Uh, well, actually, I think if you include when we really started, because we were doing Q&A, it was with telephone and a speaker that's right. on the top floor of your house. Live. So in one sense, it's been 17 years in that okay. sense, because we were doing some yeah. Q&A type things, maybe not officially. I, I would like to ask you, for the sake of our viewers, give us a little bit about your background, because you know, not many people, on the new viewers particularly, won't know where you've come from, what sort of training you have. And what you're doing here. And what you're doing here with us uh, when you've got a brain like Einstein, you know? <laughs> Well, I got an IQ higher than his. Oh, dear, there you go. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Tell us so, about it. <laughs> no, but I, I was born in San Francisco. That's bad enough, right? And then I grew up in the, on the campus of the University of California, which makes it worse. And uh, I was a trained evolutionist. Uh, I've always wanted to be involved with science. And uh, my mother says that I was born teaching. I figure she ought to know she was there at the time. Um, and so... Oops. I went on to earn science degrees as an evolutionist. I went on to teach evolution from the seventh grade through the university level. But at the age of 27, I did what a good scientist does. Check. Now, the evidence. A good scientist always seeks truth. Um, unfortunately, most scientists don't. And that, that's just the simple truth of it. Hold but, those emails. <laughs> <laughs> But that good science is supposed to seek truth. And 
when you find truth, you have to accept it if you're going to be intellectually honest. Because if you seek truth and then find it and you don't accept it, that's intellectually dishonest. And so in a search for truth, I became a Christian at the age of 27. Uh, but of course, having taught evolution, that may be a saved evolutionist, uh, I had a problem. So I spent 16 months reevaluating all the science that I had learned and taught others. Um, started really with a fresh piece of paper. Came to the realization there was no science to support evolution whatsoever. I mean, I looked at scientific law, natural process, physical evidence. At the end of 16 months, I asked myself one last question, which was, could the law of gravity ever evolve? And I would challenge anybody to explain to me how gravity could evolve. Mm. Therefore, it had to be created. And suddenly you realize every law, every natural process had to be created instantly, whole, complete. In order to fix and, the world. And the physical evidence that we find on the Earth fits much better with a worldwide flood than slow and gradual accumulation. And so I became what is called a biblical scientific creationist, someone who believes 100% from science, 100% from Bible that creation is true, occurred 6,000 years ago in six days just as we experience today. And I've been teaching that on five continents for the last 48 years. Mm -hmm. And I consider the coincidental events that brought us together to be one of the greatest events in my life. Oh, I so wow. much appreciate Revelation. We appreciate, we appreciate you. you. I know I've used <laughs> yeah. it. Can I also just say, you, you mentioned, you forgot to mention something about something called Mensa. Oh. Oh, oh, don't mention it, Howard. <laughs> Stop quaking. I, I am a lifetime member of Mensa, and I'm a lifetime member of Intertel, both. Which are? That's even higher than Mensa. Well, Mensa's the top 2%. Intertel's the top 1% of IQs. But I can assure you that I still put my pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> Oh, I can see that. And, the, and that I can have a conversation with anybody. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, you you're, do. that's very But what true. I'm trying to say is really not for blowing your trumpet, but actually letting our viewers know that when you talk about things from a biblical point of view and you've had to change your mindset um, to fall, if you like, in line with what the scriptures are saying, is so reassuring to the odd bods like ourselves. Well, and the evolutionists restrict themselves from an area of knowledge. Now, no scientist should restrict themselves from an area of knowledge. And they say everything is naturalistic, mechanistic, you know, uh, existential. But there is the supernatural. And good so, yeah. uh, as a good scientist, I came to realize that there's both natural and supernatural. And became a Christian again. Um, and have now a full-time missionary. I, I got thinking about while we were talking about this. Do you know I have either uh, done live or recorded in every single studio Revelation has had? That's very <laughs> uh, yeah. true. Very yeah. true. Even the yeah. little one in Surbiton that came after yeah. the, you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm so blessed to see what God has done for you. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a verse, by the way, that I think is appropriate for today. Okay. Which is go on. Despise not small beginnings. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. Very good. Yes, because yes. Uh, just as I started in ministry, I know what that's like. You know, so uh, and the fact of the matter is that that we were called to do what we're called to do. God honors that calling, and then God's people provide the resources that allow you to do that to benefit all of the Christian world. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. You know, even on my website, I get people from say, um, South Africa, New Zealand, that are watching on the internet, what you're doing here. Amazing. You know, and I know that they're seeing me too because they're going to my website, but it, you have an absolute worldwide impact. Yeah, thank God. Well, we're grateful to have you, and thank mm. you so much for being with us now. It's amazing the way that God brings people together to make Revelation TV what it is. And uh, the next greetings that we've got is from somebody who back in the early 2000s didn't have the foggiest idea what Revelation was about, but she lived in Spain and she had a mother who lived in London who used to tell her about this wonderful little new TV station that had begun. Well, Barbara Fernando had such an influence upon Revelation TV and uh, here she is bringing some greetings. Happy birthday, Revelation TV. 20 years anniversary. It just seems a blessing how all these years, Howard and Leslie, you have made it and you will go on for another 20 years, I'm sure. I remember my mom absolutely falling in love with you both. 
and I invited you to come to Spain for the first time. And it was just the beginning of a new chapter in our, all our lives. And you made such a difference coming out here as well. And it's been very brave for both of you to work so, so hard. And thanks for Gordon and Lorna too, for joining Revelation. And they helped so much of support for all the staff, for all the team, for Howard and Leslie. So thank you, Gordon and Lorna too. And all the staff at Revelation TV, we are so, so blessed that you are still here and you are going to different levels and we can't wait to watch what's going to happen on the next chapter. 20 years, happy birthday. Take care, God bless you, bye. Well, it's hard to imagine that 20 years ago, you and I were heading for a studio in London to meet a very young and handsome host of uh, something called Revelation TV. We'd never done television with him before, and we were on the very first broadcast. Do you remember that? I think that was very providential, Peter, that you and I, by the grace and direction of God, were guests on the first live broadcast on Valentine's Day. It's hard to believe, 20 years ago. And we were talking about the idea that Christian television in the UK should be established and should be something special. And, and we could see in, in the eyes of Howard Condor at that point that he had this very idea in mind of a, a Christian channel. Actually, there were two channels to begin with, Genesis and Revelation. Yes, we enjoyed so much being a part of all of it. And I'd like to say to Howard and the team here, uh, that wonderful verse from Amazing Grace, through many dangers, <laughs> toils, and snares, oh, yes. we have already come. It's by grace that we have come safe thus far, and grace is going to bring us home to the end. Right. And the Word of God needs to more than ever go forth in the United Kingdom and throughout the world through our, our uh, the internet channel of Revelation TV. So we're really excited that we have seen such progress and such success of the channel and it's blessed so many people and you have been a part of it. So we thank you all for supporting and continuing to stand with and pray for Revelation TV on this its 20th anniversary. Amen. God bless and keep you all. We've just had a tour of the new building and we're very impressed with the quality, the state of art of this building. To God be the glory. Great things he's done and he will continue to do. Okay, well, we don't have too much longer left on this program. We'll continue with birthday greetings on our next program. But, you know, how to been talking about the past, what we've done, how far we've come, you know, but well, what next? What next? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> um, well, what God's been putting on my heart lately is that it's time, this might sound really strange to some people, to actually step up and take more airtime on different parts uh, if, of the planet. And this is a, a big undertaking, but there's never been a better time because a lot of the prices have come down. What used to be like for one particular satellite that reached across the into the Middle East was around about 150,000 a month. It's come down to a minimal sum. I'm not allowed to say what it is, but it's, it's, it's affordable. And there are other areas in the world that we're looking at. And I thought, how do I actually share this with people? Um, but it is what God's putting on my heart, so I'm, I'm no doubt that it will come to fruition. So um, we need to be where people can have the truth from the Bible espoused and, and explained, but also the relevance of where we are at any one time with the things that are happening in the world. That's why the program I, w I used to have was World in Focus, looking at our world in focus with using God's spectacles through his word. And I really think the whole world, not just the UK, that's where God started us, but also as far-reaching as we can 
through every living soul. And it's part of a prophecy that was given to me that, you know, what eventually would happen, that it would yeah. be a worldwide uh, yeah, and, and we'd love viewers mm. to, to pray that into that, mm. wouldn't we? Yeah. And, and in a sense, we've begun that by uh, middle of December, Freeview, that was our first step, but that was very much UK orientated. And now the vision is to go from that into the uttermost parts of the world. Yeah, just as uh, the Lord said, you know, uh, this, this good news will be preached across the whole world. And yeah. you go into it, therefore, making disciples of people. It's not just letting the truth be known or good news, but actually making disciples. And I think this is what we've done with Revelation TV with the help of Grady and all other good Bible teachers and scholars. Okay. Okay. We've, yeah, we've literally going to go now, as we say goodbye to you, to um, our promo talking all about our opening ceremony. So do take some notes as you look at this and do come and join us in Spain for the grand opening of the Revelation International Center. Amen. At last, at last, can you believe it? We are holding our opening ceremony for the new Revelation International Center. The dates are going to be the 21st of April until the 24th of April. And if you're able to make it over to sunny Spain, we really would love for you to join us. On the Friday evening, the 21st, Fine Song are going to come and they're going to lead us in praise and worship and give us a concert. On the Saturday is the actual opening ceremony. Lots of our presenters are going to be wanting to get up and say a few words. They're looking forward to meeting you and really just giving thanks to God for the Revelation International Centre. Maybe you'd like to join us for church on Sunday morning. Lorna and Gordon will be having their usual church without walls and this time with a congregation and that will be you. And if you're still around on the Monday, then do join us for our mornings and maybe even a glimpse into the Q&A show in the evening. I'm not sure how long you'll be staying. We're recommending the IPV Hotel in Fingarola. Reason being, they do a good deal on bed, breakfast and evening meal. And we will arrange a coach from there each day to the new studios. Otherwise, if you'd like to stay in La Cala, there's the Grand Vic Hotel on the beach there. It's about a sort of 25 minute walk to the studios, lots of apartments and other hotels along the coast. Once you've booked your hotel and your flight, do give us a ring because we want to put your name on the list and make sure that we have plenty of space for you. So we're excited and we hope you are too. Yeah, and do give us a ring. Do come and join us if you can. We'd love to be able to spend time with you. Um, Eileen, who writes our poetry mm -hmm. for the R Times each month, says, Happy birthday, everybody. I'll never forget the years when we lived in rural France and we had no church building near us. We found Revelation TV and were so thankful to God for bringing your ministry into our living room, says Eileen. Absolutely amazing. And Eileen uh, is a big part of Revelation TV. If you get the R Times each month, you will always see Eileen's um, poems. And she's also responsible for putting together and organising the Christmas cards each mm. year. It's lovely getting the, the, the emails coming in because it reminds us what Revelation is all about, which is the people and, and just seeking to befriend them, seeking to pray with them, seeking to encourage them in their faith. And uh, that, that's why we want people to come to the opening because it would be lovely to meet them and just talk with them. Sure. Yeah. This is really, really funny. I remember one morning Howard danced onto the set and gave a regal bow to Leslie and Lorna <laughs> after a song from a certain Irish singer. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, who would that be oh who would that be our friend daniel <laughs> daniel o'donnell but lorna um the second half of our mornings tomorrow yeah, is we're on tomorrow you okay. and i so uh, we shall carry on we're going to keep the birthday balloons up for tomorrow aren't we oh we are so lovely yes. yeah but i think we'll i'd have to just blow, we'll blow a little bit into them That's yeah it. exactly keep the inflation oh but thank you so much for being with us. Dr. Grady, thanks for joining yeah. us this evening. My, and uh, Gordon and Lorna, Howard, who wants the last word? Oh, well, you, you have the last word. Thank <laughs> you so much for being with us. God bless you. Good night. Good night. Bye.